My name is David Wood. I'm Chair of London Futurists. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, David, we are now living in an exceptional time when our goals as civilization become so ambitious and our activities so complex that actually long-term thinking and skills and forecasting play a crucial role for our future well-being, which makes the activities of futurist communities so precious. So, uh, how long the idea of bringing aging processes under medical control is on your agenda, uh, agenda of your organization, London Futurists, and can you please tell how you personally first became interested in this field? Well, like many other people, I enjoy life. I enjoy continuing to have relationships with the people I like. I think it's a tragedy when people lose their health, lose their ability to interact, and lose their ability to experience life in all its fullness. And like most other people, I thought, well, there's nothing can be done about it. But then I discovered that technology is changing everything. And technology might also change the ability for us to live longer and healthier. When the Futurists officially started in 2008, it actually had a pre-existing life, uh, something called Extra Britannia, which was an extra pay related group in London with uh, its influence going back to the extra pay movement of Max Moore. Uh, it also had the name United Kingdom Transhumanist Association. And I attended that before I took over the leadership in 2008. And at that time, I had the pleasure to encounter the ideas of people like Aubrey de Grey, who had the audacity to think that with a different approach to aging, you might have healthy living. Since then, I've had speakers on healthy life extension roughly two or three times a year ever since. And the more I explore this area, the more I think it's a very serious one. This is not just uh, science fiction. It's not just hype. It's something that has a very real possibility of changing everybody's life. In which case, we should think about it before it happens. So ensure that uh, how it ends up is how we would like it, rather than us ending up with uh, some unexpected consequences, which we could have foreseen. Thank you. Well, in your recent book, The Abolition of Aging, the first kind in radical extension of healthy human longevity, you are covering many topics such as the level of existing technologies to address aging processes, and most likely consequences of the significant life extension on population level, and many others. So, could you please share how you see the main bottlenecks that now slow down the development of rejuvenation technologies and what exactly the members of our community could do to help overcome these difficulties? Overall, I see five different bottlenecks to the success of the Healthy Rejuvenating Project. The first and perhaps the most fundamental is the public mindset. You know, if the public wants this to happen, if the public sufficiently believes in it, if the public as a whole thinks, Actually, we should not accept aging and death. We should uh, expect and demand rejuvenation. Then it will change priorities of uh, organizations and companies all over the world. So that bo bottleneck is perhaps the most fundamental one. The second bottleneck is that it's possible that our open society with its free exchange of scientific ideas, with our reasonably stable financial environment, uh, that might uh, come uh, broken. It might be that some politicians will clamp down on science. They will fear the uh, message of science. It may be that bad financial policies will destroy the well-being of the economy. A little bit like what happened in 2007 to 2009. It might be that we have uh, growing problems with uh, runaway climate change. And it may be that we have people upset rightly upset in my view, with the growing inequality between the haves and the have-nots. And these uh, distress points might lead on into bad politics, might lead on to the onset of a new dark age. After all, societies have failed in the past and there's nothing to prevent our own society failing. So we have to ensure that doesn't happen. The third bottleneck is whether we can actually get people collaborating successfully because it may be that there are people who want to get involved in improving how society works, improving how healthy longevity is developed, but they have so many different viewpoints, they have so many different uh, opinions, they get in each other's way, uh, and their alliances fail to form. So there might be people working, but it doesn't work. And related to that, 
there's a question of how actually do we collaborate in practice? Is the whole research environment going to be spoiled by lots of uh, poor quality papers? Are our uh, research inboxes going to be filled up of uh, effectively noise? Or are we going to have better tools for collaboration? And the final possible bottleneck is it may turn out that the problems are just too hard to solve from an engineering and medical point of view. I don't actually think that's the case. I don't see anything physically impossible about living long and healthy, indefinitely long in fact. It is just a matter of time and effort. And the reason we might not have enough time and effort to apply ourselves isn't a technical thing, it's the four previous reasons I mentioned. Oh, I see. Thank you for sharing your vision. And now, would you please tell uh, a little bit about the current activities of your organization in terms of promotion of rejuvenation technologies? Maybe there are some events that you will advise our supporters to attend to learn more and acquire long-term vision. So I'm involved in quite a few different organizations. It's important to split responsibilities, not to have a single organization that tries to do everything. The London Futurist is mainly uh, an organisation that organises public meetings to try and raise the calibre of conversation about the future. So we uh, regularly have speakers talking about aspects of future scenarios, trying to help people to realise what's credible and what's not credible, what's desirable and what's uh, not desirable. And these meetings take place, I say, at least once a month. There is a meeting in London on the 26th of June which involves, in this case, me talking about many of the topics I'm covering now. It's the prospects for reaching rejuvenation, the abolition of aging, comprehensive therapies by 2040. So that's one thing people can look at. I'm also involved in a political think tank called Transpolitica, which is trying to raise uh, some policy suggestions about how we can organize politics in a better way to avoid some of the adverse problems I spoke about earlier. And last but not least, I also take part in the worldwide transhumanist organization called Humanity Plus. So there's plenty going on. If people want to find out more about me, you can look me up at, at DW2 on Twitter. Thank you very much.